Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and to this video where we are going to deep dive into fashion houses that have makeup brands. I didn't mention this kind of a topic in one of my new makeup releases going on the wishlist or not. I think it was like two or three weeks ago where we talked about the new lipsticks from Gucci and I did a, <laughs> a pretty fast like fashion analysis of like the house Gucci and also like the makeup and why I thought that the new makeup that Gucci has now is really reflecting on the house and why I thought maybe not all fashion houses have this and you were so interested in seeing a video about that so this is what we're gonna do we are gonna do a fashion houses versus the makeup brands and we're gonna see whether or not they are on board or totally way off this is just my personal opinion I mean I am not I don't claim to have any kind of training or education within fashion. What I tell you is what I see. And I do know that there are always the actual thoughts that the fashion designers have behind their brands and behind their collections. And I do think that we're going to see this throughout the video, that these makeup brands maybe not always are 100% in tune with the actual fashion you're gonna see that. I do have this makeup look. This makeup look, is this already live? No. I do think that this makeup look is coming later on. I am wearing my big poofy blouse for this fashion. I don't, listen, I'm trying here. I love fashion, but I am a woman in my 30s living in Sweden, in a small city in Sweden. I, listen, I can't be that high fashion, okay? It is a Sunday. I am wearing sweatpants with this fancy blouse. Doing my best. <laughs> But they filmed this look and I do think it's pretty appropriate that I'm wearing such a wild makeup look for this video because I see so many like fashion content creators saying that you shouldn't wear a lot of makeup if you're into fashion because it, it clashes, it doesn't, doesn't match. Listen sweetie, I can wear all the makeup I want and still be into fashion, okay? Stop, stop. Stop makeup shaming other women into to, to be wearing less makeup. Okay, we are allowed to wear whatever we want. I'm also drinking some Coke Zero. Mmm all into this. Let's start with Gucci then. Should I scooch so I can put some pictures? Let me scooch and also let me put up the, uh, ooh, the little file, file folder <laughs> that I have. We have these pictures. I'll put up some pictures of the Gucci makeup, the ads they have been running, like the concept pictures around the brand and a lot of people have been not liking these pictures within the beauty community. And for me personally, what I said in that video is that I think that this is very Gucci and I think that this is marketed more towards the Gucci client and the whole idea of Gucci as a brand right now. The designer behind the Gucci women's brand right now, Alessandro Michele, I don't know if this is the correct pronunciation, I'm so sorry Italian, I'm doing the very best I can, but I think his name is Alessandro Michele. His aesthetics of the Gucci brand right now is me trying out all of my grandmother's clothing all at once and just going with it. But I love it. I love this quirky Italian, more is more, over the top, just add some more pieces kind of a look. I love that. That is, maybe I can see it right now, but I love color. I love matching and mismatching prints. I love more is more. I do love that. And even though I'm not maybe the Gucci person because I can't afford to buy a lot of Gucci, I can't afford to buy any Gucci clothes. Like, do I look like a person who could spend thousand dollars on a skirt? If you think so, you are wrong. I do own one Gucci bag though, but I saved up a lot. But the thing is that the Gucci bag that I bought was the blue velvet Marmont bag and I'm so happy with it. The thing is that with the makeup brand and with the Gucci aesthetics is that I do feel like it's going together. But will Gucci be successful within the beauty community trying to access the Gucci client and not the beauty community? Who knows? But someone did tell me that Gucci did have a makeup brand before and when I saw that comment I was like yeah that's right because I saw people using Gucci makeup online. Apparently that flopped heavily and instead they came out with this like lipsticks. And what I think is maybe they did try to reach the beauty consumer like the beauty community and they failed. So instead they were like well fluff it then let's just go for the Gucci consumer. I will say though that what you see on the catwalk with Gucci isn't necessarily what people that buy Gucci wear. I mean, we all know like the Jeffree Stars and the, all the beauty gurus and the Instagram models with the Gucci belt. I hate Gucci belts. I'm so sorry. I think it's so ugly. Those people maybe do not 100% represent the Gucci catwalk model. Like the thought that Alessandro Michele and the stylist of 
the shows, like the thought that they had behind the brand. So I don't necessarily know if the people buying Gucci are actually buying into the whole aesthetics of Gucci. Because I don't see people walking around like this. I don't see anyone going full in Gucci. So I don't know, but I have heard people using Gucci lipsticks and saying that the colors are very unique and the formula is amazing. So maybe this is working for them this way around, but I will say that the makeup brand is very much the aesthetics of the fashion house. I was gonna say at least on the female side, but Gucci does show female and male together and I will say that it's pretty much the same aesthetics, which I love to be honest. I love a unisex brand like that, that is like all all in with the style. And and just so you know, the pictures that I'm gonna show throughout this episode, I'm gonna try and show you makeup collections that are spring 2020, and I'm also showing you catwalk outfits from spring, uh, summer 2020, and that was shown a while ago. I do wanna do a video talking a bit about the autumn shows 2020 as well, but we'll see. We'll see if people are interested or not. Another brand that I mentioned when I talked about this Gucci thing in my new makeup releases was Marc Jacobs, and they have on the catwalk, I'm gonna show some like looks from the <laughs> the spring summer 2020 catwalk they are very gucci let's not lie here they are also i fell into my grandma's wardrobe and i walked out looking like this it's very big and floofy and prints and quirky and just all over the place and i love that i think that mark jacobs is a really good designer and I really love his pieces but I will say that the last couple of seasons it's been very Gucci-esque but maybe he himself is very into that style right now who knows but what is not Gucci-esque is Marc Jacobs Beauty Marc Jacobs Beauty is very streamlined and pretty strict and it's not really that out there with anything to be honest either packaging or color or concept or the pictures that they put up it's very not that quirky Gucci-esque style. I will say that they have had this coconut kind of a theme going on for quite some time now and I don't think that that light flirty white shiny simplistic kind of aesthetic has been a thing with Marc Jacobs as long as that has been a thing with the makeup brand. So what I think is that Marc Jacobs beauty and Marc Jacobs fashion they are not streamlined at all. And Marc Jacobs, I don't know how many brands he has now, but before it was like Marc by Marc Jacobs and then it was like, it was a whole lot of different brands. But I will say that when it comes to beauty, they're very well loved within the beauty community. I have no idea about the numbers and how they're doing at Sephora and yada yada yada. I personally do not shop at Marc Jacobs and maybe that is because they are more simplistic and more like Dior, Chanel, but not as expensive. So it's not really what I'm looking for, but I do think that maybe they have had a bigger success with the beauty community, just taking a step away from the aesthetics of Marc Jacobs' catwalk. Let's talk about a brand that I do, and I mentioned this before, that I do think is very, it's oozing off the same feeling on the catwalk as it is in the, like the makeup department. And that is Tom Ford. Tom Ford is decadence and luxury and sexiness, at least according to me, unless you go with Versace, that is very over the top. But this is a luxurious, sexy version of Versace that is not as Italian and over the top. Tom Ford is, first of all, ex expensive not only on the makeup side because if you are watching my videos because of makeup content you already know that Tom Ford is up there when it comes to pricing but it's also crazy up there when it comes to fashion Tom Ford is a luxury luxury brand and sometimes I think that when we look at like catwalk brands we kind of think at least I did that in the beginning before I actually looked at the prices that we think that every brand that walks the catwalk and has a catwalk is all luxury and it's all like $2,000 for a bag. That isn't the case. Tom Ford is up there. Chanel is up there. Dior is up there. Maybe that's because their makeup is more up there as well. Marc Jacobs? In this kind of region? Pretty affordable. Not that bad. So maybe that's also why they are not as highly priced as Tom Ford because their fashion isn't. You can buy a Marc Jacobs bag for $500, but if you want to buy a Tom Ford one, it's like $2,500. There is a difference, okay? There is a clear difference. In Tom Ford's summer, spring summer collection for 2020, it was very dark 
and decadent and like for me autumn like this is the kind of color scheme that i like though i like dark and jewel tones and velvets and satins and all of the shiny things that he always uses i like that and so far i want to show you these glitter lipsticks that he has released for spring summer they are very reminiscent of the color scheme and the luxury glitzy glam feel wow did i just say glitzy glam who am i <laughs> the glitzy glam feeling of the spring summer cap off that he had i think this was last summer or last spring makeup collection it was this very you know white and gold summery more flowy kind of a thing which doesn't really match the either the makeup that he's releasing this year or the catwalk that he had this year but these are some pictures of outfits that was actually going down the catwalk that spring summer showing that Tom Ford actually is picking up inspiration from the catwalk within his makeup and I think that that is pretty cool and I personally I don't own anything from Tom Ford I think it is crazy expensive and I don't own anything from Tom Ford like the designer brand either you don't I'm, I'm not gonna be buying a satin bag for 2000 like I'm not crazy okay maybe i am but i'm not that crazy okay there's have there's gotta be a limit somewhere and that that's the limit i do like the aesthetics though of tom ford but let's not go crazy here shall we the next brand i wanted to talk about is giorgio armani and i do have so many more brands that i could talk about i'm only going to talk about six in this episode so if you want to see more like a part two let me know because there's a plenty of other brands out there that have like fashion my catwalks and makeup the it's not only these six and I bet that you know a couple of more as well but the Giorgio Armani catwalk this year was very toned down blues and pastels and like watercolors almost and there was a lot of blue going around and so far I haven't really found a lot of the things from Giorgio Armani like the makeup for spring summer 2020 but I did see these things and you can see that it's the same light airy very fashion look but also blues so maybe Giorgio Armani is also picking up the color palette from the catwalk into the makeup line for example you can see this cushion foundation is a blue compact with the blue sponge pretty much the same kind of blue that you could see in on like the catwalk piece and this kind of aesthetics and the color scheme also comes back in the art couture show and I, i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing that my french is ooh, I'm doing my best here it's the same kind of a color scheme even though it's more fancy more fancy let's not lie but i do feel like the Giorgio Armani makeup style is very much the like fashion instagram model style neutral effortless sometimes a bold lip sometimes just some easy breezy glitter on the eyes don't own anything from Giorgio Armani except the concealer and i do like the concealer a lot but it's not the brand that's drawing me in basically because this is my makeup aesthetics and it's not really the feeling that either Giorgio Armani the fashion brand has or Giorgio Armani the makeup brand. But I do feel like you could see it, some kind of a connection between the fashion and the makeup, but either way, it's not really appealing to me because it's not what I'm looking for. Let's talk about the last two. And the second to last one is Chanel. Chanel is just oozing of like the tweed, rich, old lady kind of a vibe. I'm personally not into the Chanel style at all. It is not, I'm not, I'm not a tweed preppy kind of a gal. Personally, I think that Chanel fashion, it's not about the aesthetics that you see on the catwalk. It's about picking pieces and wearing them like on their own. I think you have to be either very into fashion and quirky outfits to make this work for you or be that more mature preppy kind of a style. I am personally, I'm not all about the Chanel style. It's not my kind of a style and it's the same when it comes to the makeup i mean this makeup is not one of those fashionable there but almost not there natural glowy effortless kind of a looks and I'm, I, my makeup isn't effortless i'm putting a lot of effort into this but i do feel like they're jiving with each other the spring makeup collection from chanel is very pink like extremely pink you can see even on the promotion picture of the the model you can see that it is that high fashion kind of a makeup look it's not that quirky gucci aesthetics at all it is pretty much what you would see in a like fashion magazine or a fashion instagram kind of a look and i do think that this is the kind of aesthetics that you could also see on a catwalk with chanel even though i think they're a bit more out there actually with their editorial looks on the catwalk not gonna lie this mauvey pinky makeup look is not really what i saw in the in the styles or the colors on the catwalk the chanel spring summer and also autumn winter it's like black and white 
so black and white. Have Chanel always been like that? I don't remember them being that black and white. It's so black and white, you almost think it's one of those sneak peek filters from Trend Mood. Very black and white. When it comes to Dior, I'm, I don't honestly know if they are like talking to each other <laughs> at all. The designer of the Dior women wear is Maria Grazia. I Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of her aesthetics. I think it is a, a bit simple or maybe and sometimes confusing. I mean, she sent this out. I it's not um I do love a nature-inspired theme. I just don't think it's that flattering and for the price tag, I mean, Dior is, is expensive. So expensive. It's just not my kind of aesthetics, but I will say that I was so confused when I was starting to do some research for this video to see that the first, because they are probably going to have more spring collections with makeup because Dior does come out with a lot of makeup. The first spring collection with makeup was this. It's like Return to the 80s. So the catwalk is showing florally, nature-inspired, scarecrow dresses, and then you have this pastel back to the 80s makeup and it's just very not matching very not matching and I don't really know what's going on there but I'm sure that you will have more makeup collections coming out maybe something that's more in with this whole nature back to nature kind of a Thing that she has going on. I like the makeup more of Dior than I like the fashion with Dior. Even though I don't own a lot of Dior, I always seem to really appreciate the collections that they come out with because they usually do have some glow and some fun colors and usually have some really cute quads with like fun colors. But I'm also not the person to spend that much on like Dior makeup because it is really expensive for getting something that I personally feel like I can get in other brands that I am more loyal to. But right now, it feels like Dior is so big that they are... Maybe the communication between the makeup team and the fashion team maybe isn't that good and maybe it's not meant to be. Normally with like big fashion houses like this, normally what brings in the money is the perfumes the makeup and the accessories and I do think that like Dior had that big tote book, book bag which is basically a glorified shopping bag for like $2,500 also not something that I would put my money on but it's easier for someone to buy into the aesthetics of the brand by buying a perfume or a makeup item or even a bag or a belt like all of these people having Gucci belts than it is to buy a full-on outfit because buying a dress from Gucci could cost you a lot. A gown? That's $10,000. That's crazy. We don't have that kind of money, most of us at least. So buying into the makeup or the perfumes, perfumes are usually the ones that sell the best, it's like buying into the brand without actually having to spend that many thousands of dollars for a scarecrow dress. <laughs> Who's gonna buy that? To be fair though, that's the thing with catwalks. A lot of the times, the things that you see on the catwalks, they're not for sale. They're show pieces. They're just meant to sell you a feeling. A feeling of the brand, the aesthetics of the brand, so that you can go and buy one of those perfume makeup items or accessories instead. But with some of these, like Marc Jacobs or Dior, you're not really getting the feeling when you're buying one of the makeup items. So. But I do think that they're doing fine anyways. I've heard that Dior is actually doing really, really good right now. So maybe I am the only one that doesn't really like the aesthetics of Maria, Maria Grazia right now. But yeah, I think that was everything for this video. If you want to see a part two, let me know. I want to do some kind of a spin on what I saw for like on the catwalks for autumn winter 2020 or 2021, I guess then. Because um, I saw a lot of things that I myself really love and that I could see myself looking for already now because it's never a bad idea to have your eyes open for future trends at least if it's something that you already like that's how i feel about trends when something is trending that i love it's an opportunity for me to buy it at ease i'm not gonna buy trends that i don't like just because i can find them in stores i need to shit you but that was everything for this video don't forget to subscribe i do upload at least four videos a week and i will see you in my next one bye